In this video, I'm going to show you how to play 10 jazz improvisation patterns based off of the pentatonic scale that will make your next solo sound great. Hi, my name is Jason Klobnik and I'm a jazz trumpeter from Denver, Colorado that helps musicians find a better way to improvise. If you're looking for a quick jazz improv tip that will help your soloing, then you've come to the right place. Today, we're going to be learning some of the most common jazz improvisation patterns that are used in a lot of solos I've played over the years. These patterns always sound good and can easily be applied into whatever music you want them in. So take a seat, grab a pen or pencil, and let's get started. Patterns are an easy way to digest smaller chunks of common occurrences that happen in music. A pattern is a smaller grouping of either a melodic cell of notes or rhythmic groupings. Put them together in different ways and you can build a lick or even a longer melodic phrase. Patterns are great because they're easier to memorize and can give you something concrete to practice when you're not sure what to work on next. To describe these, I will talk about them as digital patterns. A digital pattern is using a series of numbers to represent scale degrees. You can keep the same digits and apply it to any scale type. Some of the patterns I'll show you are in the modern jazz trumpet practice routine and play along, or in some of my other resources that you can check out in the description below. You can apply any rhythm to these patterns that fit what you need in the context that makes the most sense. It's also important to note that when we use patterns in the context of targeting, that we view the last note of the pattern as our targeted note to keep the principle of aiming at a note with purpose. Now onto our first pattern. It is one, two, three, five, two, one. You've probably heard this one a ton, especially with other material played right before or right after. Here it is over a major scale and then over a minor. The second pattern is 3-2-1-6-1-2-3. I find that I use this one instinctively because it's a part of that pentatonic scale which is full of melodic possibilities. But you can apply the principle over other scale types as well and make changes as necessary. Like the first pattern, here it is over major and then one over minor. The third pattern, while not strictly made from just the pentatonic pitch collection, is commonly called the bebop lick, made famous by David Baker. When I first learned this pattern, I actually still thought of this as a chromatic walkdown inside of a pentatonic scale that never makes it to the sixth, and instead goes up. I know, I know, what can I say? It's how my mind works. The pattern is 1, 7, flat 7, then up to 2, down to the 6, 5. For obvious reasons, it works really well over dominant chords, but it can be used in other scenarios as well. The fourth pattern incorporates the usage of a microchromatic target. Paired with other patterns or musical ideas in front or behind can make this one really useful. It's descending one, five, four, flat three. Those were the chromatic targets that get us to the three. Many times I like to finish this by going back up to the one. The fifth pattern is really simple and the starting point for the Clark two exercise, which almost every trumpet player is familiar with. The pattern is one, two, three, one. And then you can take that same sequence up any scale type. Familiar, right? Pattern number six bounces like a yo-yo back up to the fifth. This one works really well when you need to extend a line. The pattern is three, five, two, five, one. I'll play that pattern in major and minor.
The seventh pattern purposefully omits the third to give the line some am ambiguousness and can be used over all types of harmonic devices. The pattern is 5215. It too can be sequenced up and down any scale or pitch collection for an interesting sound. Pattern number eight is one that I like to use in a number of different contexts, but it especially works well over the blues. The pattern is 56121. The ninth pattern really could be put on any two notes in close proximity to each other and bounce them back and forth. For example, 2121 two, one, with the one being the target, or 6565. Six, five. You could even flip them around and approach the target note from the bottom like 2323. Three, two, three. Any of those might sound like this. The tenth and final pattern is a shape that could be used and sequenced over any type of pitch collection or scale. Where I find this pattern most useful over is 3565, but you might find you like a different starting point altogether. Now the how part. Using patterns alone will not make your solo instantly great, but they work great as igniters. If you're not sure what to play on a solo, start with a simple pattern and give it some space to marinate. Then let your creativity jump in and see where it goes. I feel, I, I feel, I tell my students often that improvising is a balance of combining your left brain, the analytical side, with the right brain, which is the creative side. If you let one side take over more than the other, you can often run into trouble. Patterns occupy the left analytical side of the brain, so it can work well as a starting point. I'm going to try out some of the patterns shown in this video and see where they take me over this familiar chord progression. Then I'm gonna give you an opportunity to try it out on this video as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it has added value or benefit to your playing in some way. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell that's right next to it that lets you know when another video comes out. And if you know any other musician that might find this useful, you can share it with them too. Until then, my name is Jason Klopnik and I'll see you on the next one.